God bless you and welcome to another day of victory. We are continuing the series about the Holy Spirit, the mighty Holy Spirit, about Pentecost, not just the Pentecost of the church, but also your personal Pentecost and how you and I can listen and learn and detect the voice of the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, the church was born, and this is usually how we uh, talk about Pentecost and, the, and the, uh, the story of Pentecost from Acts, the second chapter, uh, because there is a mighty move of the Holy Spirit, and this is the first time in the history of mankind that the Holy Spirit comes upon the earth, upon all flesh, this way. This is absolutely amazing. So it ushers in the age of the church, or the age of grace, uh, the new covenant. And uh, uh, this is one way of looking at it. The other way is, of course, that each and every person in the upper room, and we have all the 12 apostles, we have uh, uh, 120 people all in total there, and each and every one of them has a personal experience of Pentecost. Uh, so the personal experience of the Holy Spirit is very, very impo important if we talk about God as the creator, the creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus as the redeemer of mankind. We talk about the Holy Spirit as the life giver. And life is personal. The manifestation of God you can see in his creature, Roman, in his creation. Romans, the first chapter, talks about that. Uh, the, you can see Jesus very obvious in the Gospels, in the way what he does and how he moves, what he says, and so forth. And how do you see the Holy Spirit? You see the Holy Spirit through experiences in Christian people, those that are filled with this, born of the Spirit and filled with the Spirit. So you look at the book, uh, The Acts of the Apostles, it's actually the acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. This is very, very important. So uh, however we want to talk about the Holy Spirit, we always come back to the personal experience, not the over-individualistic experience, because these experiences we have uh, in the church today, but it is experiential. It is something that we can feel and taste, so to speak. It's something that happens in our life, uh, in our lives, and, and this is very, very important. Uh, and uh, so, I think it's very important to talk about the, the, the something that, uh, that to talk about that which happened uh, at the day of Pentecost as a repetitive something that will go on through history that people will experience the baptism the, uh, the born again experience and the baptism of the or the infilling of the Holy Spirit in their personal lives. Uh, if we don't understand this, uh, either the church will be um, liberal or it will be very intellectual or it will be uh, very much centered around our will, what we do, and so forth. Uh, of course, there's a tendency when it comes to the Holy Spirit, or, or when we speak about the Holy Spirit, that we only become emotional. But it's not emotional, it is experiential. It's two different things. So uh, they experienced something that, that, that deeply affected their human personality, that deeply affected also their, mo their emotions. But it was not just an emotional thing, it was a spiritual out burst out of the upper room, out of uh, uh, being afraid actually, an amazing boldness comes upon the disciples and they go forth and they preach the gospel. And so the gospel is being spread uh, eventually all over the world. So, so I want to I just touch on this with the, with the experiential that we can have an, a, a relationship to the Holy Spirit that is experiential, that we can know and experience the voice of the Holy Spirit, the move of the Holy Spirit, the leading of the Holy Spirit in our personal lives. And this is so, so very important. Now, in the book of Acts, uh, in the eighth chapter, uh, uh, verse 26, this is about the uh, uh, evangelist uh, Philip. Philip that uh, was a deacon and then later became an evangelist uh, with mighty signs and wonders. Now he, uh, is in, he is in Samaria in a great revival and the Holy Spirit speaks to him in this revival 
to go. Uh, and uh, the first it is an angel speaking, actually. Now an angel of the Lord, verse 26 in, a, in Romans 8. I'm sorry, in Acts, the eighth chapter. Uh, now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south, along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. It's there even today. It's called Aza Street today. And it's actually the road that goes down towards Gaza. So we don't know exactly where this happened. Is it just outside of Jerusalem or is it further down towards Gaza? We, we don't know. But outside of Jerusalem uh, and, and probably, you know, a couple miles down the road, this is desert, he says. So it couldn't be absolutely just, uh, you know, on the outskirts of the city. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopian, who had charged uh, uh, all of her treasury, had come to Jeru uh, who, who had charge of all the treasury, had come to Jerusalem to worship. So this man now, the Holy Spirit is after him. Uh, he was returning and he's sitting in his chariot and he's reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said to Philip, and this is the key verse here, the Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? Now, there are two things actually, and, and I don't want to dwell on that, but first you have an angel there, so it, it's a, absolutely supernatural leading of the Holy Spirit, and then uh, a leading of God through an angel, and then the Holy Spirit speaks. So this is one of many, many examples, a dramatic example, but it can uh, come into any aspect of our life where the Holy Spirit speak to us. Do this. Now, a very detailed, like, actually, go near and overtake this chariot. Go up to this chariot and, and start speak to this person. It's a, what we call a prompting of the Spirit. And it's an example of how, the, how detailed the Holy Spirit can be in our lives. Uh, what are the results of the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And, and, and we should go and go through that a little bit more later. Uh, is an overflow of uh, uh, rivers of living water flowing in our lives. And one of the rivers is revelation. And revelation is basically the Holy Spirit revealing to us what we do not know, but we need to know for the sake of our salvation and for us to be victorious in our Christian life. So um, it's not just encyclopedical knowledge about everything. It's not just whatever you're curious about, but that which pertains to your salvation. The Holy Spirit would like to talk to you about that and lead you into the full truth and to remind you of what Jesus has said and speak to you about future. So this is uh, the revelatory uh, part of the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, and that is not just doctrinal statements and truth, but is also things what you call pertinent truth, things that apply to your practical life so you know that you are on the right path, that you're doing the right thing, you're at the with the right people at the right time doing the right thing. It's very, very important. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit thrusts you into this supernatural ministry, uh, not super spiritual, which is very important, supernatural. We are ordinary human beings, we're natural human beings, but with a supernatural ability in our lives, and we can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised us that. The Bible speaks very explicitly explicit about that. So, um, uh, uh, but it's on an experiential um, uh, level, which means that, uh, that we need to learn step by step to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. There's an uh, Old Testament uh, example of that in, in the little boy Samuel that later became the prophet Samuel. Uh, and the prophet Samuel had an amazing accuracy, accuracy in the prophetic word. And we shall deal with that uh, more in detail later, uh, but it came to the point that not even one single word that he spoke fell to the ground, but everything uh, came to pass. It was amazing prophetic precision in the spirit. This is the Old Testament. But in the beginning it wasn't so. He heard a voice and he couldn't detect, is this a human voice? Uh, or is it the voice of God? And he needed the help of Eli. Eli was a backslidden prophet, but a uh, priest, I'm sorry, but he's still a priest, he's still functioning as a priest, and, and Samuel was working 
under Eli. Uh, and uh, this is First Samuel, the third chapter. And uh, so there uh, he hears this voice. He goes to Eli, and Eli says, I haven't spoken. I haven't called for you, so go back and sleep. And eventually Eli understands this is the Lord speaking. So he actually trains Samuel to understand how to detect, listen, and obey the voice of God. Uh, and of course, that thrusted Samuel into the prophetic ministry. He, he had to be trained for it. And so you and I also in our lives have to be trained uh, to understand the voice and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit speaks to you either through a voice, uh, it's clear in your mind, uh, and I would say that uh, one of the ways which you can detect it is the Holy Spirit it is that you haven't really thought this thought before. If it's just one of your usual thoughts that you've had many times, uh, it doesn't have to be a bad thought, but, but not necessarily supernatural, not necessarily God in this very respect. But if there's something comes very clear uh, and you haven't thought it before, uh, this might be the, the Holy Spirit on the inside. And the Holy Spirit resides on the inside of you, so he speaks from the inside of you. Uh, it's not that you hear an audible voice, Sometimes that can happen as very rare, very unusual. But uh, uh, the ordinary way the Holy Spirit moves is that you hear on the inside of you, it's like bubbles of water coming up and you hear this, you get this distinct thought, this idea or this, this uh, um, something that, that, that you haven't really thought about before. Now, your first question as a human being, because human beings are frail, is, is this the Lord? Now, is this, how, how can I know that this is the Lord? The second thing is it might be a big thing, so you might, and you might know that this is the Lord, but you still say, how's this going to happen? That's the reaction of, of Mary. How is this going to happen? You know, what, 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 how, can, how can this happen? The same Holy Spirit that speaks is the same Holy Spirit that ensures you that he will be able to do this. So, but we don't, we're not quite there yet. Now we're talking about how to uh, listen and how to detect the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because when you understand that this is the Holy Spirit speaking to you, then you know that this is something that he wants to give you, that it's something he wants to encourage you with, something that he wants to inform you about, something he wants you, urges you to do. There is a leading, there is a following, there is a, a, a road that you should take. And this is the way he guides us through life. He guides us through scripture. He guides us through his spirit. He guides us through circumstances, many different ways. And we'll come back to that. But we need to learn how to detect and be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Thanks for watching. It is such a challenge to get to know the voice of the Holy Spirit. And we are going to continue to talk about that, all the different ways that you can be sure that God speaks to you through his Holy Spirit, leads you and blesses you. But until then, have another day of victory.